you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, good morning again on this wonderful fall day as we look at the scriptures uh, for the day. Just a quick reminder, next Sunday, I believe it's October 4th, is Holy Communion Sunday. So have your communion wine and bread ready as we share the sacrament online. Okay, the lesson in Matthew's Gospel is pushing, it's kind of right after uh, Palm Sunday. Uh, it's pushing towards Jesus' death, and Jesus has just cleansed the temple, the money changers, all right? So the keepers of the temple, the ones who are the religious leaders, come and say to Jesus, by what authority are you doing these things? Now Jesus answers the question. Here's his, here's his answer. He says, he gives them a question back. By the way, he seldom answers questions. He'll throw something back and get you thinking about him. Here it goes. He says, did the baptism of John the Baptist come from heaven or from human origin? It's a pretty good question. Well, they get together in a little huddle group and they're talking about this. And they say, if we say it's from heaven, then the people are going to say to us, why don't you believe him? If we say it's from human origin, we're going to cause a riot. So they went back to Jesus and said, we don't know. And Jesus says, well, I'm not going to tell you. That's his answer. You don't know, he's not going to tell him. Then he tells him a story about a father who had two sons, and he wants them to do something. Okay, I'm going to make it short and sweet. He says to the one son, go and do it. The son says, yes, I will, and doesn't do it. And he goes to the other son, says, go and do it. The son says, no, I won't, and he doesn't. Now that one, the, Jesus says, which of the two, which of the two, uh, you know, did the will of the Father. And, and really, I had it backwards. They, they say the first, the one that said no, and then yes, okay. One said no, yes, and did it. The other said yes, and didn't do it. And the one who said no, and then did do it. That's the one. Then Jesus throws this in. At the end, he says, For John came to you in a way of righteousness, and you didn't believe him. Now listen to this. The tax collectors and the prostitutes believed and after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. There is the issue. The first or last, the last or first, and Jesus has been talking all about this through uh, the last few lessons. And here we are, the last or first. We need a heart change and a mind change. Heart and mind. And boy, well, uh, you're, you're online. I can't give you a heart transplant online. But I can change your heart through Christ, the work of the Holy Spirit. And I can't give you a mind change. Uh, I don't think we do mind transplants yet. You know, I, I remember the, the movie, if any of you ever saw Young Frankenstein, a Mel Brooks movie, and there was a place the hospital had at night, uh, the mind depository place, where you bring your extra minds and put them in there the next day so they can have mind transplants. Well, that's what it's about. It's about heart transplant, mind transplant. And uh, if you need a real heart transplant, call the Lancaster General Hospital or whatever hospital you like. But in the Ezekiel lesson, the people are blaming God for things. They, the Lord is unfair. And here's what Ezekiel says. Cast away all the sin that you have committed against me and get a new heart and a new spirit. A new heart. That's what the lessons are driving at. Okay, we may say no, but if we turn around and do what God wants, that's what God wants, okay? Yeah, we may struggle with, oh, I'm not sure I want to do this, but then if we go, yeah, God calls me, I'll do it. That's what he wants. The first to last, and the last, the tax collectors, prostitutes, they're first. Why? They're listening and doing the very will of God. That's what you and I are called to do. You're called to do something, whatever it is. Prayer warrior, comfort person, send a card. Uh, somebody's in the home. And I know we can't get to see him, but you can call him, send a card. You do something. Reach out to ministry and mission. We're called to do something, to be his people. We have the new heart, the heart that follows the Lord Jesus Christ. St. Paul says it this way. If there's any encouragement in Christ, any consolation of love, any sharing of the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy. Now, here it is. Make my joy complete. Be of the same mind that is in Christ Jesus. And Christ, who is first, empties himself. Takes on the death, even the death of the cross. And then he's lifted up to God's glory. 
The first became last, him. And then the last, him, he, became first. That's our example. That's what we're called to in these lessons. That's what the teachers in the temple weren't doing. They're, you know, you can come in here, you can't come in here. Oh, you're a prostitute, a tax collector. Uh, and by the way, if the IRS is watching this, no offense to you folks today, okay? But the tax collectors then, they were really wicked people. If your tax was 20%, they could charge you 50%. The other 30 went in their pocket, you see? And the, the no one liked them. I don't know if you don't like them today or not. No one liked them. But the last first. So that's what you and I are called to be and to do. I think I told a story. I'll tell it again. Uh, <clears throat> two women are in line to go into heaven. Pearly gates. They're the back. They're last. And in this life, these women, they, they were uh, snooty. They were wealthy. Uh, you know, they, they had the best house, the best cars, the best friend, whatever you want to say. You know, they had it all. And they're, they're at the back of the line. And they're looking at the people ahead. Well, well, why is she ahead? What well, she was just a maid. Or that one, she had a child out of wedlock and lived on the other side of the railroad tracks. Why is she up there? And on and on they go, saying about these different people who are ahead of them. And as they get closer and closer to the gates, it all melts away. And they became one. The first came last. The last comes first. The people we look down our noses at. So be careful who we're judging here and what we're saying about folk. And that's what Jesus is driving at. The temple should be an open place for them to come and worship God. And God, it is the new heart, the new spirit to which we are called. For I have pleasure, no death, I have uh, no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their way and live. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. That line from Ezekiel, for I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, and then turns into the forgiveness of sin in the book of worship in the old E&R church. And that's just a wonderful line. I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their way. And that's what we're called to do today. And that means new minds, new hearts. So, no heart transplant, but we can have a new heart in Christ. No mind transplant, because we don't have brains laying around here. But we have a new mind, the mind of Christ. And may it be in and with you all. Your blessings, God's blessings upon you. Read the lessons for this day. They're powerful. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord cover you with his love and give you his peace. The love of God, the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace.